we're going to be layering from just below the parietal ridge. And if you're not sure where the parietal ridge is, it's basically where straight up and down here and here where that corner meets if you go straight in from that corner that's the parietal ridge so you have this ridge that goes all the way around the head like this and all the way through the front remember it goes here too and you're going to want to do different things in that area to help blend your haircut so we're going to be cutting just below the parietal ridge and above the occipital bone for this step here. Okay, so when you do this, if it's helpful to you to section away the parietal ridge, you can. So everything from here up, oh goodness, you absolutely can section that all away. I'm gonna leave it down so you can see the way it all works, but don't hesitate to section it up if this feels like a lot of hair to deal so with. So before we start working on the layers, we are gonna check her design line again and make sure that we like the shape of it down there. So I need to let her back up here so I can see, making sure she's nice and even, and I'm gonna tip her down. Okay. So I can see that I don't love the shape underneath here. It needs to be finished and fixed up. And we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go in and freehand this part and I'm not gonna cut anything past right behind the ear here. I just wanna clean up this length there. So let's make sure where the back, center back of her head is. And I'm gonna go across here and get that nice and clean. And you're gonna see this shape just really start coming together. And that's why I say don't do too much while it's wet because the hair changes so much as it dries. And once the hair comes back, comes over the ear, it changes shape right here. So that's why I'm saying when you're cleaning it up, don't do anything past right here when her head is tipped down. Once you get to here, you can tip her head back up and do the finishing through the side, but don't do anything past here or you're gonna create holes. Once she's tipped back up, I can continue checking that length all the way through to the front. And I'm gonna do this freehand as much as possible because I don't wanna create any tension. And here's where I can start um, correcting if I left too much length over the ear, right there. And again, we don't wanna take this part through the front too short, because once it travels back, it'll be way too short. And I would most likely sit on a stool for this um, or have my chair up a little higher. Just make sure you don't hurt your back trying to do this. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Okay. And now I wanna make sure it's even on either side. feels pretty good. So let me show you what that's looking like now that I've corrected it. So again, don't get too nervous as you're working if it's not laying exactly the way you want it to because you're going to do a lot of correcting on Bob's once it's dry. Okay, so now we're going to work on the layers. We're going to take our first section right down the middle from the occipital bone. You need to make sure that your client has her head in the right position. If the head tilts, you will create graduation rather than layers. We're gonna cut this section over our knuckle from the occipital bone to below the parietal ridge. And if you're nervous about this hair getting in there from here, you definitely can section it away. A lot of times when I'm working, once you feel comfortable with this cut, I'll just cut it in there because it is gonna be part of my guide for the top. And um, so it's okay to have it in there. Uh, but let me show you without it at first. That way you see what that looks like. Okay, so from the occipital bone, we're gonna cut over our knuckle. <clears throat> we're gonna point cut and very softly. Cut straight up. Try to make sure your hand isn't this way or that way because you're gonna create diagonal layers or graduation if your fingers aren't perpendicular to the floor or parallel to the wall. So learn your space and figure out how to give yourself those anchor points so that you can stay on track, okay? So that's what that would look like. Now typically, I'll take a little bit of a larger section because I'm not worried about this blending in, even though this is technically above the parietal ridge, I'll cut it in because I'm gonna cut it in anyway on the next step. So either way is fine, um, but a lot of times as I'm first starting out, I'll tell people to section that away so that it doesn't feel like too much hair you're trying to handle. Okay, so we've got that center piece done. Now, that center piece, you want it to be about the width of that first design line guide that you cut down the middle back here. So roughly an inch for this particular uh, shaped doll head. And then from there, we started over directing. So one of the issues that people do uh, when they're doing layers on a uh, asymmetric bob is they'll keep the layers the same length here and they forget that their design line goes down and over directs down. We need to create the same exact layering over direction that we did in the design line. So if it's a very slight di design line, uh, diagonal on the design line, we might be only over directing our section, maybe one section. With this one, because we came down so much from the ear forward, I'm gonna over direct everything back towards the ear to create that layering through there so that it follows the shape of the design line. What happens if I don't do that and the layers stay straight, 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 straight? This looks like a big chunk is missing from the hair and then the the design line looks kind of stringy. We don't want that. We want the layers to follow that shape, okay? So this next section, I'm just gonna over direct back to the middle because we started kind of soft. We went like this and then came down. So we're gonna start this pretty soft and we're just gonna over direct back towards the middle. and I wanna make sure my fingers are staying parallel to the wall. I have a habit of wanting to go like this, so I have to be very careful when I'm working that I'm not doing that. And that's it. I'm gonna work on this side and over drag this section to the middle. There's my guide. And I'm gonna cut that hair there. Anything from the occipital bone or down, I just let fall out of the section. These layers are very, very soft. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this side. Now I'm gonna over direct just one section back here. And 
and then I'm going to come on the other side and over direct one section back. We always want to let the design line fall out of our section as we start getting towards the ear. There's a lot less hair there and we don't want to layer into that design line. Okay, from here, we're going to over direct all of this back to that last section we just cut. As I pull this hair back, I want to make sure that that design line falls out of there. And if you're worried about this getting in there, you can always section that away as well. Usually it's fine, but as you're learning, if you're not comfortable, don't take bigger sections than you think you, than you, think you can handle. And then I'm gonna take one more, and I'm gonna work all the way through to the front hairline on this side, and then I'll do the other side. But as I'm coming around the head, I'll go back and forth so that I know that I'm doing the same shape on either side. Okay? And then this last section, we want to make sure that we comb it all straight back, that we don't let any of the hairs cross over, being very careful about our combing. There's not much to cut here, but sometimes there will be, especially this doll had already had some layers in there, but if you were cutting something very long to very short, you might not have any layers or be a lot more to cut off. All right, and then we're going to come here, take that last, that next section to where we cut the last one here and I'm always taking a little bit of my last section and a little bit of my next section coming and she wants to just move letting that design line fall out of my sectioning there's my guide and cutting that in just point cutting it softly okay and I'll take one more section a little bit of my last section a little bit of my next section and I'm going to over direct back to that back corner again there might not be much to cut do it anyway, and then you're letting it go. And that is the next step, okay? Okay, so the next step in this haircut is to layer the crown. So we're gonna take one side, a half an inch on one side, a half an inch roughly on the other side of the part, if she had a side part, we'd do the same thing. And then everything over directs to that part when we're cutting. Now, we've already established our length in the front. And we're gonna go with this longest piece here because she did actually have a little bit of face framing prior to this haircut and I don't want to match that. So we're gonna take the hair from the parietal ridge. We're gonna use that as our guide through the crown, which is right here and we have our point A and our point B, which is the longest piece here. And we're just gonna connect those two. There's not a lot that's gonna come off because I did pull some of this hair back and already cut it. If you're not comfortable cutting to past your second knuckle, definitely make sure you do this in little sections. You can deeper point cut than this if you want to. Um, you could blunt cut it, but I prefer to point cut. And then we're going to do the next section. So we're gonna take a little bit of this section and a little bit of the next section, and we're gonna over direct to the center because this is a center part. There's my guide, there's my second guide, and I'm just gonna connect the dots. And now the layers to the crown are gonna be following the layers that we have through the sides as well as the shape of our design line. And now I'm gonna over direct this last section to the center. Don't try to handle more hair than you're comfortable with. Point cutting and we're done. Now we're gonna come onto this side of the part and we're gonna over direct to the center where her part line is. And we're gonna create our shape here. There's point A, here's point B. I always make point B the longest part in there because sometimes you will be cutting someone's hair that had some face framing already and you don't really wanna to cut to that face framing. You wanna leave the layers as long as possible. 
And then we're just gonna bring this next section into the center. Make sure none of that hair is crossing over as you're working because it will create uneven layers. We want every hair coming straight up from where it grows. We're going to cut that and then we're done. Okay. The next step in this haircut is to blend the area of the parietal ridge. So there probably won't be a whole lot to do in this so The section. next step in this haircut is to blend the parietal ridge. Because we had one shape here and another shape here, that's always gonna come together and you might end up with a little corner straight out from where the parietal ridge is. So we want to take the hair. Our goal here is not to take off any length, but to strictly just blend the two shapes. So we're gonna come straight off that parietal ridge, see where it kind of comes up there, and we're just gonna point cut into it to blend it. We don't wanna take off any length, we just wanna blend. We're gonna follow the same pattern that we did with the design line by over directing as we're cutting because the last thing we wanna do is accidentally create too short of a blend and cause a hole in our shape. We're gonna over direct back. You could take fairly large sections here. Again, because we're not taking length, we're just checking. And this last section, I'm gonna bring all the way back like I did through the sides. Okay. We're gonna come back to the center here. Over direct back just a little, or just side, just, just to the side of the center. And we're gonna over direct back here. Over direct all the way back here. And then the last section here. Okay. Now, we're going to decide if she's gonna have any face framing or finishing around the face. Is she gonna wear bangs? Is she gonna wear you know, some slightly shorter pieces that come back here, like almost a curtain, <clears throat> curtain fringe? <clears throat> Excuse me, you would determine that now. And once you determine what you're gonna do through the front, the final stage is the finishing stage. So at this point, we would texture it, we would uh, lighten it up if it's too heavy or too thick, we'd thin it out. Um, we can create the, the push in the front to create that shorter hair, pushing longer hair away from the face. Remember, this is a shape where shorter hair is gonna be pushing longer hair. So this shape is going to lay near and into the person's face. So if you don't want that, you can try to counteract that a little bit by creating a little bit of a um, shorter hair, pushing longer hair, and that will help with that to not lay too much in her face. Um, so you have a lot of options when it comes to finishing. And I'm just gonna show you a few of what I do to create some softness in a cut like this. So I wanna make sure she's straight up and down. And I always love to come in through here and just pull out a little bit of hair to create some soft texture through there. I don't wanna to do too much because I don't wanna to create too short of pieces that are gonna come down and wanna um, be flippy. I want this to be a bob shape. I'm trying to come from underneath or above, not necessarily from the side because I don't really wanna push the hair. Because we always wanna remember that shorter hair pushes longer hair. Now, if I want to push away, I can, if that's what my goal is. When I'm doing this, I am moving my thumb a little bit. I don't wanna do a lot of texture around the face here because we have a lot less hair we're dealing with since the hairline comes up. So keep that in mind and don't go too low because you don't wanna take away the, the bulk of that design line. And this, I will push a little bit from the front just to try to get that to push away from her face just a little bit something like that okay let's come back to this side 
so I am moving my thumb, like I said. I'm not just sliding those scissors through her hair. That will disrupt the cuticle if I do that. So it doesn't look like I am, but I'm doing something like this. If the hair is longer, I'll do that. Now as I come around to the ear, I wanna make sure that I don't do too much and that I let out that design line because we wanna keep that nice, thick design line in there. Coming up from underneath, trying not too much to push the hair forward with shorter hair. And then if I wanna do the same thing in the front here, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna come from this angle. I do have to flip it up so I can reach it and just give her a little bit of texture through there. Okay, we can do the same thing through the parietal ridge and the crown, remembering to always remember the shape that you had in there as far as over directing. You wanna also over direct when you're doing these techniques. And when you're doing these type of techniques, I never go more than half the length of the hair a lot of times I'll be in the last few inches, but you kind of have freedom. I just wouldn't go any more than uh, half the length of the hair. So in this hair here, I wouldn't go more than about right there. So we're working through the parietal ridge right now, creating some softness, just a little bit in the front and then we'll go through the crown. Something like this. I'll do one section here. And we'll do one section here. So you can see. This is just breaking that cut up just a little bit. This also can help if you had a different color before you did this cut and then pieces are looking kind of choppy based on the color you did. You can break that up a little bit so it lays a little nicer for you. And the last thing would be if you felt like under here was just way too thick, you can always tip her down and you can go in here with either your scissors or texture shears. And I do the same thing whether I'm using scissors or texture shears. I always wanna open and close and pull out weight like this rather than just going in with the texture shears and just cutting. So you can go in, remove a little bit of weight there if you need to, to get that to lay a little softer or closer to the head. And this particular doll head, I think it's okay. I'll do it just to show you. Sometimes it just lays really thick out from the head and you actually have to go in there with a texture shear or something like that to just remove a little bit of weight. And I'm just gonna do a little bit through here. Okay. And the final step would just be determining if you wanted to use a flat iron or a curling iron on her, but I think um, this is really pretty, really soft, and a great cut that will grow out really nice for her. As far as maintenance for this type of cut, you're going to want to have them come in if they want to maintain this shorter line up through here, probably between six and eight weeks. If it's a graduation, uh, sometimes it needs to be even sooner. It just depends on how fast their hair grows. Um, and how much they're wanting to maintain that shape. I have had people with graduations who don't come in very often. They just let it grow all the way out and then we recut it. So that's always an option. But if they want to keep that nice, solid, um, crisp shape, then you want to be between four and eight weeks for haircuts like this. Um, again, for this one, maybe six to eight weeks. But I'll show you the texture that I put in there, the movement. Um, it almost looks like it's graduated with the way the layers lay. And it's gonna be very easy for this person to um, style the hair themselves. You could teach them about the, tick with the trick with the smaller round brush in there um, through the bottom here. So I'm really happy with the way that looks. It's got a nice shape to it. And if at the very end you feel like you don't want the hair coming down at too much of a V, 
you can definitely go through, fix that up. And if you're struggling with scissors to do that, another easy trick is to go in with trimmers and just go in and just tap that trimmer and create a really nice clean line. So you have a lot of options when it comes to this cut, but um, this is it. And if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section below. I'm here for you, I wanna help you, and I hope you love this haircut.